Hello everyone and welcome to our customer introduction seminar. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. This customer introduction is structured into five parts. The first part is an overview of the business and the product. That's followed by a walkthrough of the menu structure and then we dive into more detail with the order to cash process and the bank reconciliation. We will finish with a focus on reporting using the analysis codes to provide in-depth management information and control. So let's start with the review. My name is Paul Foden. I'm one of the co-founders of Abacus and lead the business design team. Joining me is Hasha, who's responsible for the technical team and is the Salesforce brains behind our software. The business is a UK Indian joint venture with software products, consulting services, and an overseas development center for those looking to offshore their technical resources. We're 30 plus people and are growing rapidly with the vision to be the obvious accounting choice for Salesforce users. Now let me pass you over to Hasha, who will give you an overview of the software. Thank you, PJ. Hi, uh, this is Hasha. Let me take you back to why we built Abacus in the first place. We saw a gap in the marketplace. The existing applications were global, but were being forced to fit in UK and Ireland, which is very difficult, particularly because of VAT, HMRC integration, and other audit compliances. We knew that there was a space for a UK and Irish specific product. We designed Abacus with that in mind and we made sure that it was easy to use and quick to implement with highly flexible multi-dimensional reporting. We wanted to make sure that it was sophisticated with multi-company and multi-currency and that it complied with the new complexities of the post-Brexit VAT. We also wanted to make sure that we could handle large data volume as much as Salesforce can and much more. And on top of all that, the package needed to be super intuitive and it should minimize user training. We recognize that every business is different with its own unique challenges, but a lot of accounting problems are common across the industries and we try to handle as many of those as we can out of the box, of course. We also know that one of the reasons that you will want to introduce Abacus is to extend your integrations with other systems so that you can leverage all the different Salesforce integration options. This will enable you to in multiple ways to create a comprehensive ERP solution. Accounting and finance sits at the heart of any digital transformation project. Whatever system you are, whatever system you are looking to integrate ultimately, its results must end up in the profit and loss balance sheet and receivables report. A Salesforce implementation without an integrated finance solution has always a big void at the center of your ecosystem. Abacus delivers the vast majority of the accounting functionality out of the box with flexible dimensions and chart of accounts to ensure an excellent fit with all business types. This approach frees up the time and budget for you to focus on the specific niche problems which are specific to each particular business. Abacus itself is 100% native to Salesforce and is built using Lightning components throughout the application. It uses common standard object and features such as accounts, products, price book, and therefore makes integration with other Salesforce apps very easy and straightforward. One of the key benefits of Abacus financials is the intuitive screen layout. The screens are specifically designed to look familiar to accountants. For example, the invoices does look like a real world invoice and a balance sheet is rendered in an already familiar known format. We have put a great emphasis to make sure that users can navigate the menus and submenus in a natural way so that they can use the application very easily with minimal or no user training. Management information is made easy through 16 built-in analysis codes and 10 further user-definable analysis codes so that you can extend it for the data analysis purposes. Typical use cases of extended analysis codes should be job numbers, time reporting, project and capital budgets, departments, cost centers, commissions, target, whatever it is relevant to your business. The dashboard uh, bring the numbers to life. 16 different dashboard components can be included on a single dashboard 
with up to three filters, giving enormous scope to create highly useful and dynamic dashboards. The dashboards are very easy to build because most of the information is present on the ledger entry object. Even business and non-technical users can build these dashboards without seeking any help from their admin or from the IT team for that matter. One of the most frequently asked use case is to support multiple companies in a single instance. Abacus is designed to cater to this use case by supporting unlimited number of companies within the same Salesforce instance. Data is maintained separately for each company. So reports can be run on an individual company basis or on a consolidated into group structures as required. Abacus supports raising invoices in any foreign currency in addition to the base currency, which are maintained individually for each company. Users are allowed to define the currency exchange rates as per their business practices. Foreign exchange gains and losses are calculated when they are realized and bank can be revalued as and when it is required. Brexit has added a host new VAT schemes with their own rules and reporting requirements. Abacus has a flexible VAT structure which has been designed to accommodate all of these new complexities. Abacus has also integrated with VAT MTD APIs to ensure smooth filing of VAT returns to HMRC. As I mentioned earlier, Abacus is built in such a way so that accounting and finance package can be implemented very quickly. Abacus works out of the box after the initial configuration has been completed. Implementation can be swift with majority of the time required for planning, business analysis and data migration. More complex implementations are likely to require more time for integration, development and testing. Now uh, let us look at some of the other available options in the market. Abacus compares very favorably to its peers on the Salesforce platform. Financial force is designed for large organizations and a large amount of customization is required to make it operational and hence it takes considerably more time. Accounting seed is very American in terminology and structure and struggles with especially with the UK VAT. Zero is a very good fit for small businesses. But as turnover grows, the lack of detailed reporting capabilities becomes frustrating and it does not have the ability to deal with transactions greater than 1000 per month. Abacus has been decided to, man to manage large volume of data without compromising on performance. More than 50 million transactions can be supported by the application. This design helps to integrate operational systems such as e-commerce, supply chain management, logistics, etc., which have large number of transactions on a daily basis. You can integrate with Abacus using all standard integration techniques such as RESTful web services, triggers and global methods. You can harness the application as both downstream and upstream application based on the actual requirements of the organization. Security is embedded within the Salesforce platform. Abacus takes full advantage of the native Salesforce security, which has long been regarded as the best in class market leader. That covers the product introduction. Now I will hand over to PJ to start with the application demo. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Hasha. That's a very helpful description of the software. So now let's move to the demo itself, which is based on a fictional legal firm, Horizon Legal Services which has three subsidiaries offering international products to commercial and government organizations in the defense industry. The home page is the anchor of the whole system. And very importantly, the information can be tailored to the individual's role. This user wants to see the sales trends, cash balances, and the biggest overdue invoices. They have the Salesforce Assistant, which reminds about overdue items or approvals, for example. There's a view of the diary showing today's meetings and tasks, as well as recent records they've looked at and key opportunities. This is a multi-company instance. So if we want to focus on the sales of one of the companies, just the UK, for example, then we can change the dashboard filter.
Now we can see the results just for the UK. We could further narrow the focus by industry or region if required. These filters can be modified to the suit the requirements of different businesses. If we go down to the bottom of the screen, we can change company. Currently, we're in the Irish Horizon Legal Services. Let's change that to the UK. So switching companies is easy in the same login. The Abacus menus are organized along the top of the screen. There are nine menu tabs and user access for each of them can be controlled according to the specific user needs. Sales, purchases and bank are the doing menus where you create invoices and manage the bank. The period end menu is where the financial controller looks after the configuration options and prepares monthly journals. VAT is where we create and submit back returns. Financial reports are the standard balance sheet, P&L, etc. The reports and dashboards are where we will get our management information. Let's take a look at each in turn. The sales menu contains everything related to sales, starting, of course, with customers and products. Then there are special one-off prices, orders and pro forma invoices. Then we have the normal invoices, credits, payments on account, payments and refunds. Sales failures are a unique abacus transaction and occur when a payment fails, most commonly a direct debit collection run. We'll look at these later. Let's take a look at one of the customers, the Ministry of Defence. There are three tabs, details, transactions and default products. Details includes all the company information that you might expect in the account object in Salesforce with some additional Abacus specific fields. Also, you can see there are graphs of recent sales and the payment history. These are the user definable graphs which can be tailored to suit the needs of the business. Moving to the transactions tab, you can see the sales transactions. The date range defaults to the current financial year. The transaction names are very intuitive. SI is sales invoice, SC sales credit, SA payment on account, SP sales payment, SF is the sales failure, and SR are the refund of sales credit notes. Also included are bank receipts and payments if any income has been recorded directly through the bank. And you can see the hyperlinks to take you to the relevant transactions. Default products tend to be less relevant for sales invoicing, but are very useful for suppliers to improve data entry speed and accuracy. Moving on then to the products, here we can see all the products, which again are a standard Salesforce object. Here we can see the details of the product. Note in the header that it's associated with a UK Horizon Legal Services company and is a sales type product. Products can be sales, purchases or both. Looking down the screen, we can see the product details and the associated nominal code. Lastly, we have the interest at information if required. On the tax information tab, we can set up the default VAT codes for the product according to the customer tax treatment. In this case, UK or the rest of the world have been set up as S1, 20% standard rate, and S10, export sales, 0%. Again, very useful to ensure data accuracy. Special prices overrule the standard sales price book when creating invoice. In this example, you can see that the MOD has negotiated special prices for its commercial work. Alternatively, a default discount rate can be set on the account. Sales orders and pro forma invoices both behave in the same way and both can be converted into sales invoices. The sales invoice list is a very important view and contains lots of usable information which can be tailored to the specific client requirement. Currently, we are showing the posting status, invoice date, due date, the account, customer reference, whether or not it's been emailed, the invoice currency and gross amount, paid amount, balance outstanding. And there's a hyperlink to go directly to the relevant invoice. There are several built-in list views, all of which the user can tailor to their requirements.
Sales Credits tab gives very similar information, as does the Sales Payment on Account list view. Payments on account of a customer receipts when no proper invoice has yet been raised. Deposits or payments to case a bro former invoice, for example. Sales payments can be made manually for checks or credit card receipts, or more normally are generated through the bank reconciliation. Sales refunds are the repayment of sales credit notes if they're not applied against the sales invoice. They're created directly from the sales credit note. Finally, we have the sales failures, which we believe are unique to Abacus. These occur when a sales payment fails. The most common occurrence of this is when a direct debit fails to complete and the bank claws back the funds which have been remitted. Another sales failure is the bouncing check. You've recorded the check as a receipt and then subsequently it is returned by the bank. The sales failure reinstates the value on the sales invoice and records the failure in the sales history. It's very useful for credit control purposes and to maintain an accurate payment history. Most accounting systems require you to delete the payment and pretend it never happened, so you don't have a proper record. Abacus ensures you have a complete and detailed audit trail. The purchases menu are exactly the same as sales, except in reverse, so I don't propose to go through all of those. Now let's take a look at the bank side of things. A company can have an unlimited number of bank accounts, each of which will have its own nominal ledger code, which we recommend to be unique across companies. Abacus supports all currency and account types. Each account is managed separately and can be named exactly how the business wants. Let's look at a foreign currency bank account, the Euro NatWest account. This screen shows the details of the Euro NatWest account. And in the body of the text, we can see the account details, numbers, etc., how often it's reconciled, sort codes, IBAN numbers, BIC, all the things which you need to manage the account. In the header, we have the currency, which is euros, and the statement balance in euros, of course, 4.7 million. Now that is different in the nominal ledger because of the reconciliation process. So in the nominal ledger, we've posted 2.78 million euros, which is equivalent to the base currency of 2.35 million pounds. We can see that the account was last reconciled on the 20th of January and it was last revalued on the 30th of November. We're going to look at the reconciliation later. So let's first of all have a quick look at the nominal transactions. This is where we can see all the transactions which have been posted in the nominal ledger to the bank account. And you can see here the different transaction types. Here we have bank gains and losses. We have bank receipts, we have sales failures, sales payments, etc. What we can see also is their value in euros, the source currency, and also their value in the base currency, which is pounds. Finally, we can see the status as to whether or not that item has been reconciled. The bank statements are what is actually included on the bank itself, and these have been uploaded through the CSV import. Here we can see the bank information, and the sum of this gives you the value on the bank statement, and this must agree with the bank statement. We can see here that the statement balance was last updated on the 16th of December at 10.59, and if we need to update the statement balance, we do so here on the update statement balance number. Lastly, we have the facility to create bank receipts, bank payments, bank transfers, and revaluations. So everything that's required. The period end menu is where the financial controller will typically operate and includes anything that is mildly complicated in Abacus. Firstly, there are the manual journals, which might be raised as part of the month end closing process. The opening balance journal is an interesting example. This is a large journal which can be created manually or uploaded via CSV. You will also note you can include analysis codes if required.
Abacus uses its own currency exchange rates, which are separate from the standard Salesforce rate. This allows them to be controlled separately in each company. The rates are all calculated with reference to the base currency and have an effective date, which remains in force until it is superseded by a later date. The nominal codes can be tailored to suit the business needs, but we would recommend keeping our structure. It starts with 1,000 for sales and works through the P&L in an EBITDA format, with fixed assets starting at 6,000 and finishing with the suspense accounts in the 999s. Abacus has 10 flexible analysis codes, which are in addition to the 16 built-in analysis fields, which are standard. These analysis codes can be used for anything which needs controlling and analysing and can have unlimited values. For Horizon, we're using job numbers, time reports and colleagues to analyse the numbers. But you could also use them for departments, projects, marketing campaigns, cost centres, fixed assets, anything that you need. The last few tabs cover the financial years and periods which are set up during the initial configuration. And the, finally, the accounts menu, which gives access to all Salesforce accounts, whether or not they're included in Abacus customers or suppliers. The VAT menu controls all the VAT submissions. Horizon has been set up for UK VAT returns. Here we select the relevant VAT period and draft a new VAT report. We can also see the status of previously created reports. Let's look at one that we've already prepared. This report is in a draft state, which we can tell from the header and also the grey colour. The next stage is to finalise the report in Abacus, which turns the boxes to turquoise. If Abacus is used to submit the report to HMRC, they will go green. I'm not going to finalise the report now because it'll lock the transactions within Abacus, but instead let's have a look at the underlying details. The audit report can be tailored to suit the client's needs, but typically will look something like this. The transactions are grouped by VAT code with the relevant account and product details to ensure that it's properly coded. The amounts are clearly defined so you can see exactly which boxes one to nine it affects. We hope that you'll agree that the report provides a simple and clear audit trail. On the HMRC account, once you've authorised Abacus as your approved accounting software, you can access your VAT account information through Abacus. Under the VAT configuration, you set up your VAT periods. And under the VAT codes, you manage the different VAT treatments. Deactivating the codes that you do not use simplifies the data entry. Also, if you wish to rename the codes or add your own, you can do so. The financial reports give the traditional P&L, balance sheet, receivables and payables reports. We don't expect these to be used that heavily because the dashboards give the same information in a much more accessible and intuitive way. The monthly P&L is very useful for review purposes. You create this here or we can look at one that we created earlier. This is a simple P&L with sales, cost of sales and operating expenses. Most usefully it shows the balances each month so you can identify unusual pattern. If something catches your eye, you can drill down into it. Let's look at April property sales. Here we can see the ledger entries underpinning this amount, and if wished to, we can use the hyperlinks to go to the source transaction. The cumulative PL and balance sheet work in exactly the same way. So let's look at the accounts receivable report. This is retrospective, so it can be backdated to any date that you require. Let's backdate this report to the opening balances, which were imported when this version was set up. That is on the 31st of March, 2021. 
The age data from the pools show a balance of 3.7 million. Let's check to see if it agrees with the balance sheet at the same date. And here as well, we can see the same balance of 3.7 million. Never in doubt. The accounts payable works in exactly the same way. Reports and dashboards are one of Salesforce's strongest features. If you can make reports in Excel, then you can make reports in Salesforce. The difference is that Salesforce reports are always up to date and can be shared throughout the organizations. Reports are particularly easy to build in Abacus because virtually all the information you need is on the ledger entry object, including all the analysis codes. We include approximately 70 standard reports, but it's very easy to add more. Reports can be used on their own, or they really come to life when they're used with the dashboard, another fantastic Salesforce feature. We've already looked at the Horizon homepage, so let's have a look at the Management Accounts dashboard. This dashboard, again, can be tailored to the specific requirements of the business, but this one shows the sales, cost of sales, gross profits, salaries, other overheads, and the net profit for the overall business. Also, we have the key trends for the bank, debtors, and creditors, as well as net current assets, cumulative profit, and the net worth of the business. We can change this, of course, if we just want to focus in on one company. Now let's look at the picture just for the UK. So we expect that dashboards will be used far more commonly than the P&L and balance sheet reports because they're available, accessible and easily modified according to each user's requirements. Now let's create a sales order and see how that is processed through and paid. So to begin with, we go to the sales order tab. Let's create a new one. And let's use the Ministry of Defence to illustrate. The details are all defaulted into the header directly from the selection of the account. Payment method we're going to make is going to be a direct debit. Reference, we're going to put the purchase order reference in here, which is from the MOD order. This is in sterling, the VAT treatment will be uh, UK. The exchange rate is a pound. Let's put in the first order here, and it's for a commercial partner. just see at the bottom there and we can have five hours of that now you will remember that those are the special price for the commercial partner that was negotiated for the mod let's add a new line here for a uh, an associate so we need a commercial senior associate Oops. 10 hours of their time. And then we're going to add a junior associate as well. And 20 hours of junior associate time. Now, most importantly for them, we need to put in their job number. And the job number for the MOD on this particular assignment is the JN44629, so we're going to put that into each of these. So we can process this as a sales order. So this is the order we've received for £13,600 with £2,720 of VAT. We save that. Now, when we come to do the work, and this is actually being completed, we can now convert this into a sales invoice. So let's do that with a simple button. So that's now being created into a sales invoice. 
So now we've converted this sales order into an invoice. Let's go to that invoice. So this is the draft invoice which has been created from our order. Now to save time and you having to watch me type, I've adjusted the quantities for the individuals involved in this. I've also added in the specifications of the time report that they used and the individual's name. Normally this information would come through from a time reporting system and you wouldn't have to key it manually. So when you're satisfied that all these details are correct, then we can post this invoice. That is now successfully posted. And because this is the MOD, let's assume that they've paid us by cheque. And they paid us by cheque on the 1st of January. That was paid into our NatWest account with a paying in reference because it was a cheque. So paying in reference of we had a payment. Payment date cannot be prior to the invoice date, which is very sensible. So we're going to make it the same date because they sent a cheque in the same day. And that was successful. So now this invoice is paid. But there was a problem with the cheque. They forgot to sign it and we didn't notice when we paid it in, but the bank did. So if we go to the sales payment that we've just generated, we can now generate a sales failure. And this bounced on the 15th, came back to us, say, came back to us on the 17th, with a reference for rude bank letter on that day. So we can add the failure. Now, if we go back to the invoice that we just created, we can see now that the balance is outstanding still. And if we look at the payment history, we can see both the original payment and the sales failure. So we have a full audit history of exactly what's happened. So now we would need to pay this again. So now again, we can pay it again. And they presented another check on, let's say, the 20th. That's paid into the NetWest account. Second attempt, add the payment. And now we can see that the outstanding amount is zero. We can see now we've got a original payment on the 13th, a sales failure on the 17th, and a sales payment finally on the 20th. And you could repeat this process ad nauseam if the check were to bounce again. What we can also see is the ledger entries corresponding with that, which unfortunately are quite a lot. We start off with the sales invoice references, then we have the sales payment, then we have the sales failure, and then we have the sales payment again. So whilst this might appear long-winded, it's extremely thorough. It makes sure that there's a comprehensive and detailed audit trail. The bank reconciliation is a key control in all businesses. and We've enjoyed the challenge of trying to make it as simple and comprehensive as possible. The first step is to choose the bank account that we'll reconcile. We're gonna use the GBP NatWest account. And the first step within that is to import the file. So we can browse to find the file that we want. This is the file that we're gonna import, which is a simple CSV file with five columns, date, reference, description, receipt or payment. Very straightforward file. So let's import that. So we browse to select it. It's sitting on my desktop. Open that and then we import. When the import is successful, we can go directly to the reconciliation. First thing that we can see is the first five columns that were imported. So the date, the reference, description, receipt and payment are exactly what were in the original bank statement import file. Then we can see it's either matched to payment, matched to invoice or not matched at all. It's matched to payment 
if a payment already exists. So for example, we have some rejected checks here from the MOD. We're familiar with those. So we have, this one's happened several times. So in here we have a, a payment, a receipt from the MOD, which was originally banked, and that is matched to the original sales payment. So we reconcile that. That reconciles successfully. But also we had a rejected check. Now that is a payment because the bank took the money back off us. That's also been recorded as sales failure. And we can see here the sales failure transaction, second failure, we can reconcile that. So if the payment has already been recorded in Abacus, we match to payment. More commonly, however, it'll be matched to an outstanding invoice. So here we have a receipt from the Metropolitan Police Authority for 484,000, and that's been automatically matched to invoice. Now, we can see here it's been matched to this invoice here for 436827, but there's another invoice as well. And this one here also from the Metropolitan for 47,000. The sum of those two equals that value of 484. Yes, that's correct. Yes, we can reconcile it. So that now has just generated a payment transaction or two payment transactions against the Metropolitan Police Authority. But let's have a quick look at the Metropolitan Police Authority to see how that is being recorded in their accounts. So if we go to the Metropolitan Police Authority, and one of the nice features in Salesforce is that you don't have to go through the detailed menu system. And we go to the transactions and we view there. What we can see is those two sales payments that we just generated. So we've got the sales payment transactions. Well, actually it's, it's a lot of sales payment transactions because we paid, there's a payment transaction for each line on the invoice. So these are the sales payment transactions which have been generated. So that's an extremely helpful feature. Going back to the bank reconciliation, that has now disappeared from the list. And we can work our way through this list for all the suppliers. Here we have a purchase invoice which has been paid. Again, we match that, reconcile, and it takes us back to the reconciliation screen. In this scenario here, we also have some interest income, a receipt of 5661, which we haven't reconciled. So in this case, we have an option, either to try and match to payment, match to invoice, it's a bank transfer, it's a payment on account, or in this interest, it's a bank receipt. So let's create a bank receipt for 5661. So the product code, we don't need, although it's best practice to set one up. It would be a good idea. This is to the NatWest account. That was GDP account. The date I think was, not sure truthfully from the memory, um, and we can put a reference here. This is from the statement. And it was for one, and it was 56, 61. Total code is interest income, which I don't know the number for. It's 5720 tax rate. Uh, that is uh, exempt. Oops. And there we have it. So we can save and post that. That's been posted. Now, when we go back to the bank reconciliation, now we can see that 5661 is matched and we can reconcile it. So that's how the reconciliation works. What we also have, which is very nice, is we have a nice reconciliation report. These are some I completed earlier, which shows the statement in Abacus, the outstanding payments, outstanding receipts, the outstanding bank statement lines, the outstanding receipts, to give a final amount, which is a statement amount. So that the whole thing reconciles together and you can work your way through this. Hopefully your reconciliation won't be as long as this. So that concludes the bank reconciliation.
The last feature I'd like to share with you is managing using dashboards and analysis codes. Client profitability and staff or colleague productivity are the two most critical measures for Horizon. The profit and productivity dashboard is designed to identify the performance highs and lows. So here we can see the picture just for the UK Horizon Legal Services. Let's change it to cover the whole business. Now on this spreadsheet, there are actually 20 different components. Firstly, we have the turnover, which has been identified by the different nominal ledger codes. Horizon are able to put standard costs against each of their products, which are the colleague hours, to generate a monthly standard gross profit. And they can also see the number of hours that they build each month as well. That income has then been broken down by region, by product family, which are the different levels, or by the industry. And they have the two sectors, corporate and government. We can also see the gross profit under the same measures, region, product family, and account industry. If we want to know where we're earning the most income, we can see that the US Department of Defense is a top earner, both by sales and profit and by hours, which is unsurprising. We can also see where all our income is coming from. So we can see that it's the senior associates who are generating most of our income and profitability. But the most hours are coming from the juniors. Then if we want to look at names, here we can see that the three top hitters in the business are Lauren, Carleen and Buford. And from a partner side, the engagement partner, the top hitter is Dave Rochford, whereas the engagement senior relationship partner is Eugenia. And the profits and sales are coming from Ralph Stevenson's team. And you can see the offices here which have generated those sales. So there's a terrific lot of detail here. And of course, if we wanted just to focus on the UK, we can change that. All the graphs change. And now we can see that Ingrid Amsler is our top hitter. Dave Rochford still the leading partner on engagements and unsurprisingly Eugenia on the side. But the sales now are only coming from the UK offices, which are based in Ascot and then up in Scotland in Fast Lane. So the picture changes. Now, let's have a look at Ingrid in more detail. So if we go to the period end menu and look at the colleagues, we can find her under the analysis code. So she's a colleague and Ingrid Amsler, here we are. We can see Ingrid's sales. So she's worked, her monthly sales are exclusively on BAE. You can see how much she's been billing each month. She's been billing up to 138,000 pounds to uh, BAE Systems in November. Fantastic result. And you can see the number of hours she's built. So she built 100, and, she built 150 plus hours, 165 hours in November also. And we're paying her a very reasonable salary from the business perspective of 75,000 pounds. We can see that she specialized in intellectual property. She's a senior associate and she's based in Ascot. All of this information can be tailored to the specific requirements of your particular business. So that concludes our tour of Abacus. Thank you so much for listening. And should you need more information, please do not hesitate to contact us. Many thanks again.